and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 4-2 on the hierarchical or deliberative control. Recall that we're going all the way back to the beginning. The very first robot control architecture was deliberative control and it was the slowest because it was think first and then act, which meant that the robot had to sense, create a plan, and then eyes closed execute that plan. So we will talk about some very specific examples of that today. So the objectives of today's lecture are to describe the deliberative or hierarchical control architecture, as well as components of the architecture, specific examples, as well as the role that representation plays in various control architectures. The hierarchical paradigm is think hard and act later. It is sequential and orderly, the robot senses the world and constructs a global map. The robot plans all directives to reach a goal based upon the map. And the robot acts to carry out the directives. Deliberative versus reactive control. This graphic is a review of the characteristics of deliberative versus reactive control. Deliberative is symbolic while reactive is reflexive. Reactive is much faster than deliberative. Deliberative has predictive capabilities due to the horizontal decomposition. Deliberative has a very high dependence on complete and accurate world models. Deliberative also has a very high level of intelligence compared to reactive control. It has variable latency or a delay between the stimulus and the response. Hierarchical versus behavior-based control. One of the key differences between reactive and behavior-based control is representation. In hierarchical control, the representation or memory is in the modeling and planning sequentially after the sensor and perception and before the task execution and motor control. In behavior-based control, the representation or memory is distributed among the parallel behaviors in the vertical decomposition. Note that in deliberative control, there is a world model to manipulate, to build a map, to explore the world, avoid collisions, and navigate the environment. Hierarchical representation. The world model is sometimes referred to as representation for the hierarchical paradigm. All sensor observations are fused into one global data structure, which we call the world model. Creating a single representation of the world can be very challenges, challenging, and this creation can be very slow. In the 60s, the computing power was not, as fat, was not fast enough to deal with this large amount of information. Even with increased computing power in the 80s, the hierarchical or deliberative architecture still was not fast enough. Biological intelligence was thought to be a better solution for navigational tasks with a rapid response time in the open world. Notice that the world model can include a priori representation, sensed information, and cognitive knowledge. There are three hierarchical paradigms, including top-down or plan, control, which is to measure the error, or planning, which is world model. The first deliberative control architecture was used by Shakey in the 1970s, and it was called STRIPS. Shakey used STRIPS algorithm for planning how to accomplish goals. This was a means-end analysis or one way of measuring the error that chose actions to reduce the difference between the initial state and the goal state. STRIPS was inspired by the cognitive behavior in humans. The way this was done was with a STRIPS difference table. For example, if the robot had to move from point X to point Y. If the robot is more than 200 miles away, then it would fly. The robot's next state is that it has arrived at Y or it is at the airport. If the robot is then between 100 and 200 miles away, then it can take the train. And the next state is either at Y or at the train station. If the robot is less than 200 miles away, then the robot will drive from home or the airport. The robot will drive the rental car or personal car. If the robot is less than a mile away, it will then walk and the final state will be to arrive at Y. Designers must set up the world model representation, difference table, and difference out evaluator during the programming phase. Note that STRIP assumes that there is a closed world model, which means that everything that the robot needs is there at design time and that it cannot change once the robot begins to execute the plan. But it also suffers from a frame problem, which means it has to store everything that the robot needs, which can become untenable.